Thank you all for being here today. It's such a special, special day for all of us to, uh, to share with Alan and his phenomenal accomplishment of uh, the last 17 years here. You know, unbelievably to me, it's when we, I first stepped foot on this campus 51 years ago, and you think about it, the country was deeply divided over the Vietnam War, race relations, women's rights, sexual the sexual revolution, Catholic social teaching. Uh, I remember vividly my freshman year, the campus speakers coming were you know, constantly picketed in a much, much more vigorous way than people uh, picket now. And, um, and although the academic life at BC was rigorous then, as it is today, I would say back then it was a little parochial. And I use that in, a, in the kindest sense. Um, but with the arrival of our good friend, Father Don Monin, who was sitting here, who I consider to be the second founder of BC, uh, he really instituted a sense of excellence across the board in the, the lifeblood of the, of the university. And it was excellence not only academically, but spiritually, athletically, the physical uh, content of the, of the university, uh, and financially. And he created, uh, you know, he challenged us basically with him to create a university in the Jesuit tradition which would rival the best in the world, Catholic or not. And he set out to attract intellectually exciting faculty and administration and he created an environment which challenged the uh, alumni body and the trustees uh, to invest in that mission and that goal. And, um, and he knew that people invested in people and in ideas. And so fast forward from 1972 when he came to the turn of the century, by that time we had sort of built a good reputation, built a solid uh, financial foundation, <laughs> But Y2K was coming, and the culture of the country was shifting. And uh, the conversations that we were having at the board at that point, and I was incredibly honored to, to be invited to be the chairman of the board during that period of time. Uh, and as we finished up uh, our second capital campaign at that point, we were trying to figure out how to move the intellectual life at Boston College to a, to a different level. And um, we wanted to create a, a, a place and a forum which um, would take on the most difficult uh, issues of the day and to look at them from a 360 degree framework uh, to uh, have an honest, objective, rigorous discussion and debate about those issues. Uh, and not do it from a doctrinaire philosophical perspective, but really try to get at the essence of, of what those issues were. And to uh, create an environment where people would think, people would learn, and people would end up influencing the influencers with the ideas that came out of, out of those discussions. And thus, the Boise Center came from that concept. But we needed a leader who could execute on that. And when Father and Father, Father Monin and Father Leahy first introduced me to, uh, to Alan, it was an interesting thing, because he was coming from BU at that time. And they said, well, he, he has a little bit of a different background. Uh, <laughs> and, and I said, oh yeah, what's that? He said, well, first of all, he, he's from the Jewish faith. He's, he's a contrarian. Uh, and, and, he, and, and he's a real contrarian. He's not a, not a regular contrarian. He's a real contrarian. Uh, and I said, that sounds perfect for what we're trying to do. And, um, and so Alan joined the faculty. And it was, from our standpoint, one of the great, great, great additions to, to the university. And uh, he attracted Eric, and he attracted Suzanne, and he attracted a, a number of other people. And over the, over the course of the years, um, he's led us into 260 public events, an average of 16 per academic year. We've had five major multi-session academic conferences. We've had 15 annual prophetic voice lectures. 
we've had approximately 65 discussions and 125 lunch colloquia over the 17 year period of time. He's attracted 16 scholars from 11 countries. He's gotten involved, uh, you know, got the school and, and the center involved with the State Department. And, and I thought today was a witness. The quality of the people in that room today is a real demonstration of his convening power for intellectual power around the country. It's something that he doesn't even know. Over the course of the last six months, I've been visited by uh, the heads of the similar organizations at Harvard, Princeton, Yale, uh, and a number of think tanks uh, asking us about how they can collaborate with the Blasi Center. And I have to say, as I travel around for visitors around the world, uh, one of the things that I get most complimented about is the founding and the involvement of, of the Blasi Center, and particularly Alan's leadership of, of, uh, of the center. And I mean, we all know what an unbelievable intellectual, prolific writer he is. And all I can say is from, um, from our perspective, he has enriched the intellectual spiritual, ethical mindset of Boston College uh, through his thought leadership. He's enhanced the academic reputation of the school, and he's honored our family name in a way that we will be eternally grateful. And, uh, you know, Alan, you have just done an extraordinary, extraordinary, extraordinary job in the leadership of this effort, and we thank you very much. Thank you. So,